it's 12 o'clock. And so we will get started. So welcome everybody. Um, it's really fun to be here today with our virtual webinar, um, joining Minnesota in two locations and also Sweden. Um, so just a few important reminders, if you are not super familiar with Zoom webinars, um, we are on a webinar setting today, so we cannot see or hear you, our guests, um, but hopefully you can see and hear us well. And we would love to interact with you via the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you have any tech difficulties, you're welcome to reach out there and Mickey will jump on in and try to help you out. And we'll also um, hold all the other questions until the end of the program. Um, although if you have clarifying questions throughout, please go ahead and ask and we'll address them as we go as well. Um, but the kind of big picture questions we'll save till the end. Um, we are also recording this program today and we are gonna share that recording out via email afterwards, as well as any other notes or resources that come up during the program. So um, watch for that follow-up email and we will um, we'll have lots of good good stuff in there. So my name is Erin swenson -Klatt. If we haven't met, I'm the Food and Handcraft Programs Coordinator at the American Swedish Institute. We are here today with North House Folk School and also um, two of the lead instructors from Seta Gantan's Institute for Craft. Uh, Johanna Rundbeck is here from the Hand Sewing Program and Susanna Aiton is here from the Weaving Program. And they're gonna tell us more about their work at Sajagantan in a moment. But first, um, Jessa, will you introduce yourself in North House? I will. Hi everyone, I'm Jessa Frost. I'm the Program Director at North House Folk School, located up in Grand Marais, Minnesota, right on the shore of Lake Superior. And it is such a pleasure today to be here with Erin and Susanna and Johanna. Um, as we are celebrating our 10th annual Fiber Week here on campus. Uh, for those of you familiar with North House, we host a whole wide breadth of traditional craft education courses throughout the year. Uh, for the we, this week in February, we focus in deeply on wool and other fiber traditions. And so all week long on campus, we have had Anishinaabe finger weaving and knitting and spinning and natural dyeing and penny rugs and felting. And I know that I'm missing some, but uh, campus has been full of folks um, really embracing uh, and, and enjoying learning about the wonderful textiles that populate our lives. And so uh, we thought this was the perfect time to kick off our uh, almost year-long celebration of a big anniversary for Satraglantan, um, the hundredth birthday of of Satraglantan, which is pretty amazing. Here at North House, we are now twenty-six, so we're feeling like Ooh, we're getting the hang of being a school. But we have lots to learn, and are very excited to um, be pointing forward towards a visit from um, Satya Glanson's lead instructors. And so they'll be teaching coursework at North House, coursework at the American Swedish Institute, uh, which Erin can tell you a little bit more about, but we wanted to uh, have an opportunity for you, our audience, to learn more about the work that they're doing in Sweden and uh, dive into some traditional craft knowledge. So we're excited to welcome you in person, Susanna and Johanna, to campus and uh, really looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. We are looking forward to it too. Yes. And June. Aren't we all looking forward to June? We're really looking June. forward to June. Yeah. <laughs> when it yeah. all happens. <laughs> and um, we're going to have a really lovely kind of casual conversation today about what Satyagantan is and how Susanna and Johanna got there and what they do there. But for anybody who doesn't know, um, Sweden is a country where handcraft and sled is taught in all kinds of places. It's taught in primary schools, it's taught in museums, it's taught in um, local folk schools, but Satagantan is really the preeminent place for learning craft with a traditional approach in Sweden. And so we're really excited to be um, having the opportunity to connect with them so often this year. And so we are hosting Satagantan's Four, four of their 
core program instructors in June. Um, this is a project with the support of the American Scandinavian Foundation. Um, and so Susanna and Johanna and their colleagues, Beth and Johan, are going to come all in June to teach at North House. I know that Jess is going to be able to share some more about their classes, and some of them are full, and some of them still have space available. And then they'll also be here for the Wooden Boat Show in June um, up at North House, which is a great opportunity if you're not able to take a class to interact with them. And then they're coming down to Minneapolis, and they'll be teaching at the American Swedish Institute, the Weavers Guild of Minnesota, Fireweed Community Woodshop, and the Chicago Avenue Fire Arts Center. So we're going to have um, a septic onion takeover of Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> Swedish invasion. Um, so it's going to be really fun. So we're going to tell you more about the other opportunities to connect with these amazing instructors and traditional craft experts on their visit. Um, but today, we're just going to hear, hear more from from you two about where where you live in the world and what you do. So uh, Susanna and Johanna, can you tell us, for, first of all, both who you are, and then um, we'll talk a little bit about what Septic Anton is, and we'll share some of your photos. So. Yeah, <laughs> I will start. Uh, <laughs> well, my name is Johanna, and I'm 43 years old, and I live in a small village called Vikabin in the area of Dalarna. And it's about 40 minutes drive from Sätglentan where I work as a teacher. And I work as a part-time teacher, actually, and um, also do some administration for the academic year at Sätglentan. So I teach and have some administration as well. Uh, and in Vikabin, I live uh, in, with my kids. I have two kids, two sons, and with my fiancé and with a horse. <laughs> so uh, when I'm not teaching and I'm not at Sete Glentan, I'm actually spending a lot of time with my horse in the woods. In Dalarna, we have a lot of woods. And um, it's, it's a nice... Um, it's a nice way to, to actually relax and do something else. Mm. Yeah, that's a, a yeah. little about me. Wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my name is Susanna and I'm 35. I live in Inchon, which is very close to the school Sätegantan, only about three kilometers. And I live there with my partner, Henrik, and our dog, Anton. And before I moved to Dalarna to actually study at Sätegantan, I moved around a lot in Sweden. But then I came here and I have completely fallen in love with this area. So I have to stay here for a long time. And yeah, short introduction on me. Yeah, wonderful. So I will show um, the photos that Johanna and Susanna have assembled. Yeah, good. Here we are. So you know where we are. Okay. Yes. Looks good. Um, so go ahead. Yeah, this is Sweden. Where, where you are. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sweden. And uh, in the middle of Sweden, we often say a middle of Sweden, even though it's not actually the middle of Sweden, but <laughs> uh, but uh, in this area, it's called Dalarna. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it's a, a kind of mecca of folklore traditions, actually. Yeah, so a lot of folklore traditions are, are uh, actually captured the way it was uh, about 100 years ago or even uh, longer before so it's it's um, alive kind of and it's so special because of that yeah yeah you can see a lot of trees a lot of uh, mountains and uh, we are actually on the top of the mountain mm -hmm in Inchen Dalarna, and here you come closer and closer to our, yeah, this is our main building. The blue door is very important at Sätteglentan. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we have some 
colleagues too, which working on the grass in the summer. <laughs> yeah. So this is from the opposite side. So you can see the view of the mountains. The blue mountains of Dalana is very famous. Mm -hmm. But now it's not summer. Of course, it's winter here. So we have actually a storm coming in this evening. So it's uh, I really enjoy to be inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Will you tell us a little bit about um, what the school does throughout the year? Well, yes. we do. You want me to talk, Johanna? Or yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're a craft center, and we have four specializations in our longer courses or longer programs, and these are. They run one to three years, so you can either do just one year or you continue on doing a second year and then a third year if you like. And then we have four subjects for specializations so it's blacksmithing, woodworking, sewing and weaving. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have shorter courses. Yes, uh, but these are our... courses and short, shorter courses yeah. during exactly. the summer mostly. Yeah. And then these are the longer ones that go run for several years so we have blacksmithing and there we even start with making our own coal and here there's yeah maybe working in the forge yeah back to, this is making their own charcoal yeah yeah it often happens in the autumn when it's weather and uh, and uh, this is from um, actually this autumn and it was magic with the sun and the smoke mm -hmm. and everything uh, so uh, it's this is one of the really special things about Sete too, is yes. that you are working from the raw materials yes. all the way through the process. And so this mm -hmm. is quite uncommon to be able to learn the entire process. Mm -hmm. um, but you kind of go through the whole process every year with all of the students. Yes, and then if you do. stay, you get to do it multiple times and get better and better at it. Is that mm -hmm. right? That's exactly. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And some uh, forging. Yeah. And then we have woodworking. And here's another one of our teachers working hard. Mm -hmm. And then there's sewing, of course. Yes, using the heavy iron. <laughs> and lots of hand stitching, tiny, tiny stitches. Yes. Taking a lot of time, but it's worth it. Yeah, and then uh, weaving and specifically linen weaving is a bit special for Sassilato. We have lots of linen threads here, and also reconstructing uh, antique fabrics is one of the big things we do in the weaving course. So this mm -hmm. is an example of that. And yeah. the reconstruction work is actually in the all four specializations. Yeah, yeah. it's typical yeah. for us. We, the, we... Yeah, the sewing yeah. students. So the garment, afterwards. yes. So they did an amazing work there. Mm. So it's a collaboration between several courses. Yes, we do, and it's a luxury to actually get this hand woven fabric for us to to cut in, <laughs> <laughs> and to to uh, um, put our stitches in after. Yeah. Words. Yeah, it's magic. And you're both bringing that approach to the classes that you're teaching here in June because. Johanna, you're really doing kind of a reconstruction yes, uh, kind of. traditional it's... project for your class at North House. And then um, we'll be doing kind of like more of a inspiration or design your own pocket yes. class um, at ASI. Mm -hmm. And then Suzanne is going to be doing some reconstruction work um, in her class down here in Minneapolis, too. So that will be learning how to take drafts from historic fabrics and mm -hmm. use them. Um, in in weaving projects that you want to work on so there's going to be some some more more of that so this was an important thing to to remember yeah. and come back to that more yeah so here's another photo you shared yes uh, we have lectures of course uh, we have some um, instructors coming from all of sweden and from the board as well mm -hmm. and doing some lectures about subjects that we think is important for our students to, to um, get a chance to involve with. Yeah. 
How many students do you usually have for the regular school year? In about, all yeah, about year? 60. Yeah. Is, is our goal. Yeah. So it's a small school. It's a small yeah. school. Yeah. Oh, this is me in my studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Down in my basement, I have a little studio. And that's uh, really uh, good when you live where you work as well. Yeah. So when I'm not a teaching and I'm not in, in administration, I, I work with uh, sewing folk costumes, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's I a guess. picture of me <laughs> of working with a coat, yeah. man's coat from Rettvik, the area of Rettvik. Yeah. And this is, uh, oh, this is Sanna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to yeah. say something else about the coat? I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, please. It's, it's a very old one. Uh, the look of this and the shape of it and the cut has been the same actually for three, 300 years. Hmm. And it's still very much in use here uh, by uh, the most of the people actually owns this kind of garments and use it for midsummer and for celebrations, anniversaries and so on. And when they would like to dress up, you are actually always you, you are always dressed up when you wear your fall costume. You can <laughs> rely on you have clothes for every opportunity. Yeah, yeah, cool. And then the next photo, Susanna. <laughs> yes, that's me at my spinning wheel. I don't go to the studio, but, <laughs> uh, but um, I really enjoy spinning. And this is uh, me at work with that. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I'm weaving, when I'm not teaching and I'm weaving, it's a lot of, uh, lot of scarves. <laughs> that's my favorite yeah. thing too. Uh, and I really like the, the spinning is sort of working with very, very ancient methods and very traditional methods and then taking it to a more contemporary look in the weaving, although these are not hand spun, but just generally yeah. working with ancient me me methods, but contemporary pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can follow us. <laughs> of course, yeah, we have a website and we have Facebook and Instagram. So please yeah, follow we'll us. Yeah. There are those again in the follow up email too, so that people can mm -hmm. come back to that. Yes, um, of course. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that I can see you better. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, wonderful. So there's just a few photos to kind of get a, a taste of where in the world you are. Mm -hmm. um, but will you tell us more about how you came to Satagantan and um, yeah, what? What, uh, how did you find out about it and what brought you there? Well, uh, I, I start, uh, I was actually taking uh, a long course uh, at another school, being a student and uh, heard about Sätterglantan and uh, it, it was really fascinating me with doing this from the basic Mm -hmm. and do, doing everything just uh, all natural from the basic and I think that's uh, most of our students actually uh, is fascinating still uh, with this that we do it from the basic and and um, so so I was actually a student at Sete Glanton as well uh, oh, it wow. was, okay. yeah it was 20 years ago <laughs> and uh, it gave me a really really good start uh, were you did you also take was your education also in other places did you yes. do a folk school or another mm -hmm. type of school too a folk school in two and a half years before yeah. I started in South Clinton yeah yeah okay. and then uh, I started I I actually had a, a break from South Clinton I I um, I was at home working with just in my studio for a couple of years and then uh, they rang from Satellantan and asked me if I mm -hmm. wanted to come back and now teach. And I was, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was an honor, of yeah. course, to be back and to teach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've been yeah. actually working there for 13 years now. Yeah, yeah, you're mm. one of the, the long time faces there. Yes, I, know. I am. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Susanna, how did you find Sattegantan? Uh, I actually 
completely stumbled across Zapaglampan. I was working in an office job um, after I studied history for economic history, actually, for several years. And then I, um, I quit that for many reasons. And I started an office job and I just stumbled over Zapaglampan and I felt immediately this is where I want to be. Uh, which seemed like a very odd thing because I, I was not a craftsperson in any way. And uh, I looked it up and I had just missed the application date. Mm -hmm. So I decided I'd give it a year and wait and I'd probably lose interest. But after a year, I was more like, I really want to start now. Uh, so <laughs> I have also studied there. And yeah. I studied there for three years and I started five years ago, my own studying there. So um I'm very new compared to Johanna. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I also have the great honor of them calling me uh, and asking if I wanted to instruct. And um, just like I stumbled over the existence of Satyadamsan, I stumbled over teaching, it feels like, where they invited me to teach. And I found that it's uh, almost more enjoyable than actually weaving, although I love <laughs> weaving very much. So I'm really, really happy to be where I am right now. And we are so glad that you had the opportunity to be with us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Will you tell us more about um, yeah, what a normal school year is like and what you are doing as the instructors there? Yes. Um, at the sewing program, uh, we have actually it's a two part course uh, that are um, divided between modern sewing and mm. hand sewing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So in the modern sewing, we we learn uh, modern pattern construction and uh, uh, sewing and sewing machines. And uh, a very important thing is the design process, how to produce your own garments and how mm -hmm. to make them fit well. Yeah. Yeah. And in the hand sewing, we, we of course study old garments that are a couple of hundred years old yeah. and see the stitches and uh, uh, how they are done actually. And uh, it's very interesting to see uh, because we have a lot of old false costumes here yeah preserved and um, we we train to, to do the stitches right and um, practice some um, fitting as well to do to make this old kind of garments to fit it's not as easy as it sounds because people were kind of different in their bodies uh, about 150 years ago when you worked a lot and you kind of didn't have so much to eat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a lot of different things for the garments. So you, you have to, to see and understand how it's done so you can make it fit people nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. And are the classes then working on kind of like the similar does everyone work on the same project during the year or do students work on different projects according to their um, interests Johanna uh, no it, in year one we we actually it's kind of um uh, you don't have the opportunity to choose so much um, you follow our plan until the, the last 10 weeks, actually, when we have this project work, mm -hmm. when you can go on and work with, with something that uh, had um, that is interesting you and which we have learned during the year, actually. Cool. Yeah. So then and then you have a fashion show at the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love and seeing it, those photos every year. Yeah. And perhaps this year you can be there live. Yeah, maybe. To see it. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, it's very popular and it's making me so proud to, to actually actually see all of the students and everything they have done. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Susanna, what, what does the weaving program cover for the 
how does that work for the year? Um, well, in the first year you study, we focus very much on the basics and uh, there's a lot of weaving theory, but we also we talk a lot about different materials, both the materials we would use, which is like only natural materials, but we want to know everything about them down to we study them with microscopes so it's like we're, there's a lot of focus on materials and then we're also really going back to basics because we are shearing the sheep we are harvesting the flax and we are spinning the fibers and we are dying we're dying both with natural dye so the first course like the first week both the spinning both the weaving and the sewing students actually yes. they go out and gather their mm. uh, their plants for mm -hmm. the first week of plant dyeing and then later you'll learn to dye with synthetic dyes as well and we'll discuss the history of dyeing and the history of fabrics and fibers and textiles and, um, a lot of this is both the sewing and weaving classes working together uh, when we're really back to basics so the sewing students also try spinning and shearing mm -hmm. all of mm -hmm. this yeah. and there's lots of um, just like with the sewing class, in the first year, there's quite a lot of a set plan that all the students follow, but there's some wiggle room in there for individual taste, of course, but everyone's yes. doing yes. generally the same project. Yeah. And then the second year, you develop the skills that you've learned during the first year, and we have much, much bigger projects with thinner threads and the, more threads and it will be linen or flax which is much more difficult to work with and thinner variants mm -hmm. and we'll do this reconstruction project together with the sewing class as well and there's also especially the first half of the second year is very like it's a big project focused on developing skills becoming a very skilled craftsperson and weaver mm -hmm. and then the second half of the year is a lot more free then you start to do a big uh, art project and then you have this final project for the 10 weeks so that there you're really starting to develop your or be able to express your individual um, style a lot more there mm -hmm. but obviously that's been all the way but here you the focus is more on that mm -hmm. and then in the third year it's the, a lot of independent work because the focus is on becoming a professional craftsperson who can live off your of your craft so you have to you don't get as much time with the teachers but you do have to sort of prove that you are competent and working independently and, and you can do an internship for a couple of weeks and you do um, a, a series production if you like so you sort of show that you can continually produce something at the same high standard uh, so it's a lot more geared towards making a living off of your craft later um, before we go any further there's lots of questions about the language uh, of instruction mm -hmm. ah. oh yeah yes so um technically you have to teach in swedish because you're a swedish yes school yeah. um, mm -hmm. but will you talk a little bit about where your students are from and how people from other countries might be able to participate. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of students from abroad. We have uh, folks from Germany, from Great Britain, from actually from United States uh, mm -hmm. and uh, from Japan, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we, we often uh, wonder uh, why it's so lots of Japanese studying? Uh, do you know that, Sana? Because they are often study uh, weaving. I think it's word of mouth. Word of mouth, but mm -hmm. uh, there is a big craft culture in Japan as well, yeah, and yeah. Uh, like the aesthetics are somewhat similar. But I have recently learned that there are because um, there are also a lot of Japanese students in our folk schools which is a slightly mm -hmm. different kind of school from what yes. yes. mm -hmm. and apparently there are lots of university teachers in Japan sending us these folk school students saying mm -hmm. go to Sweden you can study very cheaply and mm -hmm. you can learn a language by immersion and you can mm -hmm. learn the culture so 
Um, I'm assuming we are sort of feeding off of that, even though we're not yeah. actually a folk school. Mm -hmm. But we really enjoy the fact that we have lots and lots of international yes. students. Of course. Um, and we are we do mainly teach in Swedish. Yeah. So an international student will have a lot more work to do because they have to try to understand what we're doing in Swedish. But we do also usually try to give little short um, summaries of what yeah, we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously we do try to help people along, but they yes, do have their own responsibility of, of mm. trying to keep up with the Swedish as well. But we do our best to help them uh, yeah. too. So they're not completely left without mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. It's our main goal to actually do uh, to do our teaching in Swedish. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we got money from the government to do that, so that's <laughs> we need to stick for that. It's, it's one of your requirements. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. Will you mm. tell us actually a little bit about um, because I think many Americans have heard of folk schools, but especially those who are who know North House and kind of the idea of where a folk school comes from. Uh, but folk schools are one type of school in in Scandinavia where you, which are often teaching handcraft, mm -hmm. um, but Satagantan is different. And then you can also go through professional programs. So there's like various opportunities for learning craft in Sweden and kind of where does Satagantan sit as opposed to the folk schools or the other university programs that are available? <laughs> it's a step up from a folk school, but it's not a university. It's right. kind of a middle between them, and um, we have a bit higher. Um, um, like, um, <laughs> um, requirements. Yes, yes exactly. for, for our students. Yeah, yeah we have grades for sure. every course, and uh, the full school doesn't have that. So, mm -hmm. so we we. Um, uh, we want them to be a little bit um, more. They are, um, yeah, they're more skilled. Helt enkelt sådana. <laughs> <laughs> they need, they need a, to be better. <laughs> they need to be smarter and more clever. Yeah, at their yeah. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, like a folk school, especially the like the more artsy uh, programs, like part of their requirements is that it's it's. It's there for some kind of personal development, mm -hmm. and um, because I have worked as a teacher at a folk school as well, and it was a very different job from what I do at Satikant, mm -hmm. because uh, I have to take the the students' personal development into account all the time mm -hmm. in a way that I don't do at Satikant, because there we are focused on the craft. Yes. Um, yeah. So there I focus on the skill. The, like the craft skills that are developing and obviously I have to like if my students aren't feeling well I notice that and we discuss it but it's not yes. part of the job in the same way and then if you go up to like a university level I don't think you'd barely discuss that with your teacher at all no, so there's no. a, like it goes from personal development and craft up to something completely different uh, yeah. via which yeah. is in the middle. And the folk schools offer both these kind of long term programs yeah. in some ways similar to what Satagantan has, but then they also offer sort of what we would call more community education in yeah. the US. So it's yeah. like you can kind of come for a, a short course or something like that as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you also teach short courses. That's Satagantan. Yeah, but that's also kind of separate from the school year. So the school yeah. year is the main program that you have the four different um, core areas. And then people come, both you teach the short courses sometimes, and then you also have other people come and teach the short courses, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have you, a lot of oh, short courses during the summer. Yeah. 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 When the, when the uh, academic year is actually closed. So uh, then the short courses come in in and uh, Sana, how many courses do we have during the summer? Uh, 
I was. I think it's somewhere around five every week the whole summer, yes, except yes. for there's like one week in the beginning and one week in the end mm -hmm. where there isn't anything. Mm -hmm. So, and the summer at Sapigantan is almost uh, three months because we end the academic year uh, in the like around the 20th end of May. Of and, mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then we don't start until the end of August again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's lots of time for lots of short courses. Yes. Um, and anybody can sign up for those, right? Even yes, Americans. Yes. <laughs> of course, <laughs> they are so welcome. <laughs> and by short course, in this case, you're speaking about like a number of days, not yes. weeks or months. So. No, no then it's five to seven oh. days. Yeah, it's a short version. <gasps> yeah. yeah. Cool. But you also have, during COVID, you were teaching some classes virtually as well. And that's, has that continued um, past, or even before COVID, you were teaching some yes, classes virtually time. during the school year. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. that's also, there's like a lot of different ways to yes. take classes from Sydney It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's not all, all by distance. You, you need to come there and have some teaching. And... Right. Yeah, about four or five times a year. That's right. Okay. You, you actually have a weekend there with your teacher so you can mm. see and so you can learn by learning by doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yes, you do so much. It's amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> will you tell us more as two people who have both been students at Satagantan and then also have taught students or known other students um, at Satagantan, what do students who have gone through the program at Satagantan do after they finish? Like, where, what, what are you using this education for? You were kind of talking a little bit about at three years, you can have the opportunity to do the professional kind of certification. And yeah, so that, the journeyman certificate. Yeah. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's that opportunity to do sort of the it's a test right and then you mm -hmm, it is. get your certificate to be able to to do this work professionally but yes. do people go and start their own businesses or mm -hmm. work for other people what what are some of the things that they do afterwards yeah m many of our students actually do this journeyman certificate and uh, working uh, with their own business to actually uh, take uh, uh, orders from people to do slate and craft mm -hmm. in yeah. some way, yeah. Uh, but many of them also are teachers, actually, in doing it like uh, maybe they they continue to study and uh, have this uh, opportunity to be a teacher for either children or or adults. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, some of them just go come to us to actually do something else, uh, take a break from their ordinary work and come to us and uh, have a wonderful year to yeah. do something else. Yeah, to get yeah. inspired. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, do you can you say? Yeah, more? Um, and then also, as we were saying, Sati Gantan is sort of in the middle of the schools um, mm -hmm. hierarchy so some people go on to study even more and that could even mm -hmm. be that they go on to more art or design uh, direction or they go on to universities to more academic work mm -hmm. um, and then like for the weaving for example in Sweden we still have a couple of professional weaving studios that are very well known so Marta Moss Fjetterström and we have Alice Lund who works with uh, Helena Hernmark, who's in, mm -hmm. in Minneapolis, and lots, or lots of students, but several students from Sati Lundsson work professionally for them. Yeah. So, like, there are several opportunities to go either into your own business, work for others, or work more academically, and other people go into working with museums and yeah. curating their collections, or uh, working, like, uh, with teaching through museums because that's quite common and then there's something called a craft consultant 
in Sweden. So each region will have a, a couple of craft consultants that promote local craft people. And it's quite common to have studied at Sattiglund and then go on to becoming one of these craft consultants. So there are a, quite, there's quite a wide variety of ways you can work with craft after you've studied here. Yeah. That's, that's uh, really fun to hear, I think, about what all of the options are um, that you can potentially, yeah, potentially go on to do with uh, an education from Satagantan, which is, to me, really unique versus the options for education in this way in the U.S. I can't really think of a place in the U.S. that can kind of guide you through all of the the different options that Satagantan has. So um, yeah, that's why Americans end up there sometimes, I think. <laughs> yes, you are so welcome. <laughs> well. Before we take some other questions, will you tell us a little bit more about what what work you do when you're not teaching? Because Johanna, you told us a little bit about your mm -hmm. You both said a little bit about your craft work, but just mm. tell us kind of more about what it means to be an instructor at Satellantan and how you otherwise fill your time. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I really enjoy working with uh, growing up people, adults. Yes, it's really luxury. I have a class of about 10 people. <laughs> they're motivated, they're grown up. They are actually doing this full focus uh, and it's fantastic to meet those people and to, to guide them uh, through uh, one or three years yeah. to do that. Yeah, and um, as I said before, I have a little firm that actually do this uh, made to measure uh, for costumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, it's here, here in Sweden and in, in Dalarna, uh, particular, it's it's very common, as I told you, that it, to use this for costumes. Yeah. So yeah, uh, and um, not many people can do can do them can can yeah. actually know how to do the pattern and uh, how to make them fit. Yeah. So it's a privilege actually to to be able to do this, and it's very appreciated among people to to um, that someone do that yeah so people will come to you to place the orders do they also bring you old costumes to help mm -hmm. re yes. like take care of or um maybe even redo so that they can use them again yes often yeah. they have uh, heritage their their fall costumes for their parents or, or grandparents Yep. or even longer back so so uh, they really it's a it's a treasure for them to to uh, either to order from me or 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 if they have it from from uh, their parents mm -hmm. and uh, i do a lot of uh, changing so yep. make, make them fit today yep. yeah yeah mm. Mm. Johanna, this is probably a question that could take a whole nother webinar, but is there <laughs> a lot of regional variation in the folk costume? Do you specialize in a particular area? Yes, I do. Um, because, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, it's kind of natural because I live here and many people actually have their folk costume just in this particular area. Yeah. So therefore, I, I do a lot of, of um, folk costumes from this area, but we have very, the variation is very big between the areas. But of course, I help someone from the southern, southern Sweden too, if they want to, to come. But mm -hmm. uh, then they have to do uh, uh, some research for me. So it's easy for me to actually, if they have a garments, it's very easy. I can and look at the garment. Okay, I, I do another one of this. That's no mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Susanna, what else do you do for your time when you're not teaching right now? Um, well, 
as uh, as I said, I'm kind of new to teaching, so it uh, it still takes a lot of my focus, mm -hmm. <laughs> even when I'm not uh, at work. Uh, so I have not um, started weaving professionally on my own, not by myself yet, because which is the plan in the future. But I want my weaving to still be very playful and filled with joy when I'm at home, and I don't have to focus on. Um, on speed or professionalism, I can just uh, focus on finding what I enjoy doing and yeah. do it for fun so that I, I don't lose the joy of that because there's um, so much energy still goes into teaching. And I get very, very inspired by my students. So I want to be able to pick up what are what I'm, the inspiration that I'm getting from them and use it to play around with by myself. Uh, so I have my loom that you you can glimpse in the background and uh, I try to weave a little bit every week uh, and just do it for my own sake at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's quite important to me, <laughs> but it doesn't all become monetized. Mm. Uh, well, that was all the questions I had. Um, Jessa, do you have any other questions or Suzanne or Johanna, do you want to say anything else about your Satyagantan time, or otherwise we can take a few questions from the yes. guests. There's yeah. a great question, I think, that really speaks to the heart of what makes the Satyagantan spe uh, experience special mm -hmm. um, for Susanna about flax and where that grows and what the harvesting process looks like. Yeah, they're yeah. saying, are you raising flax locally for spinning and then weaving? And is it singles for warp and weft? Yes. Uh, so there is the, usually we plant a little patch of flax every year at the school, and then it's harvested by the next uh, year's students. And then um, we um, recently have started a project called One Square Meter of Flax in Sweden a couple of years ago and that's actually grown and grown so first it was just one region in Sweden and then it was the whole Sweden and then our Scandinavian uh, countries started doing the same thing so people could um, they could apply for flax seeds and then they'd get a bag of flax seeds for free and they everyone would plant their own square meter of flax and then there'd be courses on how to uh, take care of it and how to grow it and how to harvest it and how to process it and as part of that we actually started growing uh, a larger amount of flax at uh, a local it's a, a garden center or a it's a local garden that grows vegetables and sells to the village just mm -hmm. we started joining them and made a much bigger patch of flax more than one square meter uh, as well as up at school and hopefully we'll be doing that again again this year and that is then harvested by the next year's students and of course flax has to be dried for a year or so before it can then be further processed so this is like generations of students taking over after each other um, so that's some of the flax we use but we also gifted an amazing amount of flax both like raw flax that hasn't been processed and flax in different stages of processes. So we have like a whole small barn with flax <laughs> in different stages. And sort of depending on where a student is in their process, they can use some of that. Uh, everyone goes through the whole process of harvesting, drying and preparing it. But if you want to use more flax than the small amount we grow, there's always enough in this barn. Yeah. And there's also lots of, we are also gifted lots of hand spun flax that no one wants to use anymore. So we have such an amazing amount of flax. And usually it's single. And mostly like within the coursework, we only do it for uh, weft because spinning for uh, a warp is, quite technically challenging but people who want to do that are very welcome to do that within the more the projects that are more free yeah. uh, I can't off the top of my head remember anyone doing that with flax I know they've done it with wool but uh, there's a lot of people spinning flax for their west 
uh, when they do the three year projects as well. And all first years spin some flex for West for some specific project. So it's a big part of what we do. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few other questions about um, specifically what is included in the curriculums. And so Tina was wondering, do you ever do Viking era weaving or reconstruction? And then um, Kim was also wondering, do you do embroidery as a part of the hand sewing course? Yeah, sure. Well, start. No, no. Sana. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, so Viking, it isn't normally we don't do that uh, specifically for, I, or I haven't seen it done in within the coursework as this is the reconstruction we're going to do. Uh, Johanna has been here longer, will know if uh, oh. there has been, but there are definitely lots of students who are interested in that and do it within the projects that are, they do a bit more, uh, have a bit more choice to do. So our current third year has done both. She just did a big uh, uh, project with reconstructing um, a woolen fabric in a diamond twill, which is a uh, based on a fabric from uh, the, the findings in Birka. Mm -hmm. However, we don't have access to the same kind of yarns that they had, mm -hmm. and she didn't have time to spin the uh, spin the wool for that. So she has only spun the weft for that, and has had use a industrial yarn for the warp. So it's not a perfect reconstruction, but it's what we have and it's a beautiful piece of fabric. What we don't have at Sapiglant, sadly, are the warp weighted looms that they would mm. often have mm. used during that era. So mm. that is probably one of the reasons that we haven't uh, actually focused that far back in time. Uh, so that would be a wonderful thing to be able to develop later on in yeah. the next hundred years. Because there is a huge interest among yeah. our students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Johanna, have you had other yes. students work mm -hmm. on Viking uh, reconstructions? Or Elsa, you could comment on the embroidery question. Mm -hmm. um, um, in hand sewing, we don't work with uh, that old garments as in the Vikings. Yeah. We, we focus on the... the uh, 1500th century and uh, and uh, the years uh, to our days so that's our main focus yeah but we do have embroidery <laughs> <laughs> in uh, um, with white uh, we call it white embroidery mm -hmm. and then uh, you do it in linen with yeah. linen threads yeah and that's um, that's the type of embroidery that creates a lot of beautiful texture on the folk costumes. Yeah, yeah. White yeah. on white and yeah. yeah, it's decoration on, on yeah. white uh, linen garment. And we do have wool embroidery yeah. in the end of the course as well. And do this shulsek as I'm supposed to do uh, with ASI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> more, more information we will share about that. Um, let's see, we have a few, we have a great many other questions. Um, here's one from Elizabeth. Elizabeth is wondering, what sheep breeds do you work with? And then are there any non-sheep animal fibers that you use in your classes? Do you use other animal fibers that are not wool? Uh, we haven't sheared any other animals that I'm aware of. But uh, sometimes in the spinning classes, we have guest teachers and they'll bring a very amount of different fibers along. And I know I've spun alpaca um, and I know some people have spun uh, dog hair. Um, <laughs> and I think we got to try some camel sometimes, but it's not like mm -hmm. a huge amount. It's just testing it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't know if you're aware of anything more, Johanna. Silk is actually yeah. an animal. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a small one, but it's that's an true. animal. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And we've worked with, it's a lot of uh, like Swedish sheep uh, breeds. So we've done 
Fin Ulls 4, which is a very soft uh, fiber, and mm. uh, Gotland, which is slightly harsher, and Leicester, which isn't the Swedish, uh, it's the British sheep breed, as far as I'm aware, um, that's also slightly harder than, it's the, about the same quality as Gotland, but Gotland is gray and uh, Leicester is white. Mm -hmm. And we've also done Gute, which is a sort of very indigenous Swedish breed, very old, um, mm -hmm. also from the island of Gotland, and that's uh, very rough uh, fibers. So you just sort of have to, it's, it's a lovely fiber to work with, but it doesn't work for all fabrics as we are. But we're not used to scratchy fabrics today. We want them to be yeah. soft. <laughs> that's true. Mm. Oh, there's so many good questions. Let's see. I think we can also we'll ask a few more questions about the um, materials, and then we can ask some of the questions about the coursework. Um, mm -hmm. Kim's wondering for the weaving program if you're working on card and inkle looms as well as the big floor looms. Uh, not a lot. It's very focused on the floor looms. There's some. Uh, we don't usually use card looms, but there are some band weaving or ribbon weaving, mm -hmm. um, which we've used. Uh, we call them a band grind. I don't know the English word for that. Um, so, yeah. and some people use the weaving, very simple weaving frames, but it's not the main focus of the program than as floor looms. Yeah. I think we would call Bangrind, um, we call it Scandinavian rigid heddle here. So okay. it's yeah. a long name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your name is nicer. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. And then Wendy's wondering, are you working with hand spun linen? She's going back to the white um, linen embroidery. So she's wondering mm -hmm. if you're using hand spun linen with the embroidery. Um, and or are you using and are you using commercial linen or hand spun linen for that? No, we only use commercial yeah. uh, spun linen. Yeah, because there are uh, beginners <laughs> in everything. And mm -hmm. to do this very, very thin thread needs mm -hmm. some much practicing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's kind of in the start of the course as well. So mm -hmm. they are beginners. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Karen was also wondering, Johanna, are you using original or old cloth to reconstruct the folk costumes, or are you using modern cloth that's been reproduced for the folk costumes? Oh, I don't quite understand what you mean then. Um, what's uh, the, think... the fabric? Is it right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And which kind is of it... fabric we use? Is it uh, like? Cloth that was made a long time ago, or are you using new cloth that was new, that's made new in the US yes. or made in today? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you can buy, or we have lots of second hands in Sweden. This is rather big here. So yeah. sometimes you find that fabric that it's not been used. Uh, yeah. And then we, we use it, of course, yeah. because it yeah. is a totally different quality. Yeah. Yeah. And but is that uh, commercially available cloth? then reconstructed to be like historic cloth or is it yes you just find yeah. what you can it is but not as heavy as we actually want mm -hmm. it but yeah. we can do some something with the fabric and um, we actually kind of um felt it a little bit more so we have yeah. yeah 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 so so we do it gets more heavier then it's yeah. more like the the uh, older garments yeah. Great. Um, and then let's see, we have a question here about a book from Malin Sealander. Do you know this, this name at all? Yeah. She's wondering about Ria rugs in cow hair and whether you've done any of that or are working with that at all. <laughs> uh, I think like we have several books from Malin Sealander. Mm -hmm. uh, and I do recognize that she has worked with uh, cow hair and like cow hair uh, in Swedish was uh, quite common in certain products 
earlier mm. on. It's not very common now. You can still sometimes get hold of it. Uh, I haven't noticed that it works specifically in Ria with it, but I know it's been used for, uh, I think, uh, furniture fabric uses, and definitely just rugs in general. Mm. So it wouldn't surprise me if Ria rugs would use yeah. that as well. But it's not something we usually teach. Mm. Um, but if someone had cow hair yarn that they've got hold of or fibers, they could use that, absolutely. Yeah. A couple well, of questions too about yeah. the short courses, would, which would be good to address people wondering um, mm -hmm. about if someone who doesn't speak Swedish could participate in a short course um, and where you find the instructors for those courses. Yeah, we have it on our website. So please uh, go in there. It's uh, unfortunately all in Swedish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's a kind of a short description so you it's easy to translate it actually yeah. to English uh, we're working on perhaps um, uh, some we will get it translated soon but um, the instructors in the summer courses that are short about five to seven days they are used to getting people from all over the world so uh, they are used to, to to do some teaching in English as well. It's not a problem at all for most of yeah. our teachers. Yeah. So, so you could all... come, you could come to a short course if you didn't speak Swedish, and yes. you could expect to be able to yes. mostly follow along. <laughs> yes, of course. And and you you see how to to do it by hand. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we. All of our teachers are speaking English, of course. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And if you, if the, someone wanted to teach at Sattagantan, would they uh, contact the school to ask them about teaching, or do yeah. you only invite people? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> if you want to, to teach uh, at our school, uh, we have uh, our administration, Julia mm -hmm. and Marina who works with the short courses and you are more than welcome to actually send an email and uh, um, uh, do a presentation of what you would, uh, would like to teach. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please do. <laughs> and then um, for, I think going back to the school year programs, just a few more questions. First of all, anybody can apply. You can be a beginner, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You don't have to I have a beginner. You don't have no, to so, have previous experience. To, no, no. Yeah. But but you do need to to go. You have to have your to done your school. But you have the gymnasium school, Lasana. You have to have your high school uh, diploma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's important. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But yeah. you don't need to actually know anything about uh, sewing or weaving or anything like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and then Kim was also wondering, is there any other assistance from the school for helping people find jobs afterwards, or is that kind of more the student's responsibility? Yes, it is. It's yeah. the student's responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I would like to see that it's quite like a strong community of sharing yeah. uh, relevant jobs when they come up. Um, yeah. So for, I mentioned that I taught at a folk school and that came up in like we have like an alumni Facebook group. So anyone who's studied at Sattaglantan is part of that. And there will often be any relevant jobs coming up will be shared there. So we do. It creates quite a big, strong community and yes, we like yes. help each other out. So yeah. uh, I found my other job there, for example. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes, you, you do meet a lot of people, actually, when you are going <laughs> at South Glenton mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully get connections to the whole yes. world. And uh, yeah. if it's you're an amazing them, networking. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, it's a pretty it special place. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that that leads to our, our last question um, from uh, Virginia, who's wondering if you were involved in the documentary that was made about Satagantan last year. Um, and we'll share the link to the documentary because it's available online, but it's called Made in Sweden. And yes. it was a team of people who came from Minnesota to work um, at Satagantan to learn more about the school. So did you get to be a part of that at all? Mm -hmm. 
I yeah. was part of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, um, yes, um, speaking a little bit about uh, what I think about Sete Glinton and why it's, in, it, it's important to me. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah. Well, we'll, uh, we'll share the link to that because it's a yeah. wonderful way to learn yes. more about the school and it it's is. really beautifully done. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Very proud to be a part of that. Good. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad. Oh, good. Jess has got the link all ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Well, we have run our hour. That went fast. Mm -hmm. um, so wonderful to talk to you both. We're so excited that you're coming to Minnesota in June. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to host you. Mm -hmm. Jessa, will you say a few words quickly about the coursework and other options to meet Susanna and Johanna when they're here at North House? Sure. Uh, Susanna and Johanna will be at North House um, around June 11th and teaching four-day courses that are June 12th through the 16th. Um, Johanna's class will be in sewing traditional linen shirts. If you would like to take it, you have to put your name on the waiting list and hope you get lucky because it is full. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, but the waiting list is a surprisingly effective way of getting into classes. Yeah. Um, and Susanna will be teaching a four-day course as well on rose path weaving. Um, for that class, you need to have uh, enough experience weaving that you know how to warp a loom and can can work a bit on your own. Um, but there is room in that class. I think there are two or three more seats available. So you can find uh, the place to register right now for those classes at northhouse.org. They are open for registration. There are scholarships available um, if that would make the classes more accessible for you. And if you can't spend a whole week with us in June, you can come up for the Wooden Boat Show and Summer Solstice Festival here in Grand Marais at North House. Uh, that is, will be the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so June 17th through 19th. It's a really fun time uh, to be here in Grand Marais, welcoming summer, and uh, there are demonstrations, there's a chowder feed, there is usually a big puppet pageant, there will be featured speakers and presentations and all kinds of great stuff. So it's a wonderful weekend to come up and you'll have a chance to hear from and uh, watch Susanna and Johanna, as well as their colleagues, Beth and Johan, uh, demonstrate while they are here. And following that, they're gonna spend some more time in the North Shore, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully make an appearance in Duluth. We'll share details when we have that. And then head down to the cities where Erin can speak about how to catch them there. Yeah, so we're really looking forward to co-hosting our four guest instructors with these other great organizations in Minneapolis. Um, so Susanna is going to be teaching a class on um, using historic textiles for reconstruction or other inspiration. So this is very much in line with how Santaganton approaches um, weaving. We're excited about that. And so you'll spend the first day at the American Swedish Institute looking at our historic collections. And then you'll head over to the Weaver's Guild of Minnesota, which is in downtown Minneapolis and work for a day and a half on their looms. Uh, they have an option also for students to stay um, on and do some more weaving the week after as well. So that's a really great opportunity. And then Johanna is going to be teaching here at ASI and she will be doing um, show sacks, which is the decorative pocket that's very common on folk costumes. And we'll use some of the collections here as well as some of Johanna's personal um, collections to kind of look at different options for design and then create your own design and, and do your own work. So that will be some opportunity for embroidery and applique and other good construction hand sewing. So really, really great classes that we're excited to have um, here in Minnesota. It's going to be so fun to have you both. Uh, and we have two more webinars coming up, one on March 17th with Beth Moen. Um, so Beth teaches in the wood carving program. And so she's going to be on, that's during North House's Wood Week, again on a Friday. And then Johan Safström is here um, online <laughs> April 14th. Um, and that's um, going to be discussing the blacksmithing program at, at Sattagantan. And those are also free and um, available for folks to sign up for 
um, at the ASI website, so asimn.org. So I think those are all the things. Oh, and we're lo really looking forward to um, having a small exhibit at ASI this summer about Seth Gunson's 100th anniversary. So mm -hmm. look for that too. You can stop in at ASI all summer starting um, mid-June through October to see more of the work that um, has been done at Seth Gunson by either instructors or by um, folks from the Midwest who have gone over and worked there and then come back. So we are so grateful that we have such strong ties to this mm -hmm. wonderful mm -hmm. place on the other side of the world. <laughs> um, it's really a treat. So we're we're looking forward to celebrating that all year long. And here's to another hundred years. So yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it feels terrific to get the opportunity to to uh, be able to come to you in this way and to teach and meet your American friends. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and a huge great. thanks to the American Scandinavian Foundation for making Yay. this visit and this whole mm -hmm. year of celebration possible. Mm -hmm. That's great. All right. Well, this wraps up our program for today. We are so glad that you all were able to join us. We are looking forward to sharing um, with you all of the links and resources from the chat in that follow-up email, and um, we'll send out that in the next day or so. We'll also send out the link to the recording so you can go back and rewatch or look at more of the beautiful photos again, if you like. Um, and a quick plug for other upcoming programs, we have two other wonderful virtual lectures coming up that I think would be of interest to this group on Sunday morning. We're actually talking to Shirsten Neumuller, um, who has uh, visited Minnesota in the last year and has a book out about um, band weaving. So going back to that that topic. She's my former student. And she's a former <laughs> student yeah. um, as well. So the world is very mm -hmm. small. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and she's a current uh, instructor for the short courses at Santa Gantan as well. So yes, um, yeah. So you could go to Sweden to take her class mm -hmm. or you, yeah. if you didn't get to take her class here in, in the US. <laughs> um, so she's talking on on Sunday morning. So you can find that information online. And then Christine Novotny, who's a recent um, artisan development program alumni from the North House Folk Schools Artisan Development Program, was over at Satagantan um, last year. And mm -hmm. she is going to be talking in a few weeks about her journeys through Scandinavia um, and her experience learning about both the more traditional approach to weaving and the more contemporary approach to weaving. Um, in Scandinavia. And so we have a virtual lecture with her coming up in March. So we'll send out the link for that as well. Um, Cause it would be really fun to keep connecting people to these great institutions and stories that are coming out of Sweden today. We are so excited about that. Okay, that's all we have time for, but there's some thank yous in the chat back to mm. you all. And we of course echo, the, echo those thank yous as well. and. Wish everybody at North House who's there for Fiber Retreat to have a great mm -hmm. weekend. Um, and Susanna and Johanna, we can't wait to see you soon. So thank you. We can't thank wait you very to much. There. Yeah. <laughs> Take care. Have a good night. Bye. Yes, yeah. you too. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>